You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. I need you to give Jeff the instructions you just gave him. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. there's just a couple basic rules, Jeff. I know you're new to podcasts and you're just building your, you know, know. celebrity ism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And your Is whole persona, your persona, right? First of all, it's take, not an easy task. Take the damn name tag off. Dang. Rule number one. Gosh, take yeah. the stupid Dang. name tag off. All right, got it. Yeah. Okay. There um, we go. Rule number two. Oh gosh. Uh, Get the headset on right. <laughs> Thank you. That's Everyone, this is Jeff Helm. Yep. Awesome guy, borderline loser. Yes, okay. this happens. He he has taken the place of Mark Livese as our new number one salesman. <laughs> oh, oh, Mark, <laughs> take that in your pipe and smoke it. Mark chose yeah. not to, you know, come this trip. Yes. So yeah. we got a new number one guy. Yes. For those for those that are listening, we are at the uh Mile High Hunt and Fish Expo in, in uh Denver, Colorado, basically. And if you're if you're around, to today's date is April fifth. And we're going to be here all day today, which is a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Come to check us out. We're at the Peaks uh, booth here, but there's a there's a ton of uh, sportsmen and sports stuff going on. Brad is going to edit the podcast and get it up this afternoon or try to. So you there's should no be trying. This you, is yeah, yeah, Yoda. This is there is no try. It, it, it. Yeah, so we do. We should. Uh, we should. You should be getting your ears on this with a little bit of time if you're in the area to uh pop in here and see us at the show uh only instructions we had was for jeff we, we don't want to have a lot of edits because we got to get this out the door so what we're asking for you to do is don't not, say anything stupid yeah because if you say something stupid we're gonna have to edit it out which would delay this video and this podcast by Correct. day therefore missing pe- like getting the message out about this glorious event yeah, yeah. at the infamous Gaylord Fokker. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Does that count or no? Yeah, in Aurora, is, I in guess. Aurora, Colorado. We, not Aurora, Illinois, like on Wayne's World. We are. I'm going to switch headsets with Let's you. Start over. This headsets. Some people's kids. This headset takes a little bit of yeah. skill to use. And <laughs> Which obviously, I don't, I don't hold. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, winning. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, let's go around the horn here. So, uh, Jeff Helm, who are you? Uh, <laughs> who am I? I mean, how deep do we want to go? Well, like, not that. I don't want to. God, who am I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's have conversations with myself lately. <laughs> so. I don't know. Let's keep it okay. PG, PG. That's right. one. Um, <laughs> elevator yeah. pitch. Uh, elevator, yeah. elevator pitch. Quick and, quick and short. Let's quick go through. Short. I want to go through yeah. one of the internal conversations you have with yeah. yourself. <laughs> I don't think we have that kind of time on our hands. <laughs> uh, Jeff, I hail from the great state of Texas. Uh-huh. Um, explains a lot avid bow hunter um have been connected with a lot of uh these people um via total archery challenge mm-hmm. and uh connections with a few different companies over the years peaks being one of them I actually met bryce at a banquet and and became friends and well uh, i mean, well I use that term loosely yeah right? <laughs> uh, when, when yeah. i met jeff yeah. It was at a roulette table oh, in <laughs> Reno. Okay. Oh, dude, that was a legendary night, man. <laughs> that was that was a legendary night. Well, I, I'm not a gambler, and I was yeah. just sitting there watching him, and Jeff felt sorry for me, so he's like, Jeff was on a roll that Come night. Come here, let me teach you the ways. Yes. <laughs> the, the ways of the Jedi. You know? so, um, Although but, I never gambled that night. I just no, got to clarify No, he that, watched. I, I, I was up, though. I won. Did you? I mean, do you ever really win at a roulette table? Yes, no. Jeff. You, <laughs> and I, you and I. If you, if we stay to the system, stay no. to the system. Remember, we have a plan. Do you remember the gal that was running the thing? Oh and yeah. She's like, "There's an ATM over there," and she goes, "Do you know what ATM stand for?" And Jeff goes, "What?" She goes, "Another ten minutes." <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, so Jeff, hunter, bow hunter, especially, yes, been sir. been killing lots of uh, critters. With the bow for a long time. Yeah, been involved in the hunting industry. I've seen you since I started. Yeah, basically since long I time. started sort of doing the podcast. We've shot before. We've shot at TAC together. Yeah. Uh, I I swear there's not a person you don't know in the hunting industry. It's kind He's of friends weird. with it's everybody. Crazy. You walk around and Jeff's like, you do know him? Do you know her? Do you know him? Yeah, yeah. Jeff knows everyone. I love people. I love I love good people, and I enjoy relationships. I enjoy good time around the campfire um so it's been fun of, huh yeah 100 like uh we have a like we usually do when we come to these trade shows and get a booth going uh bryce gets a big giant house and then yep. we all party yep 
Uh, mostly we eat we eat carnivore. We yeah, we eat steak and, and, uh, and butter. Yeah, Carnival. we like butter. Our version, butter. Of car, our version of partying is steaks, oh, yeah. butters, and, and energy drinks. Go hard on yeah, the spin drift. And the spin drift. <laughs> and the spin drift. I'm not sponsored, but if you want to, here I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, we got Bryce Bishop here, who is the owner, founder of Peaks Equipment. And uh, Bryce, you've been on the show before. Yep. Uh, but real quick, for po- folks listening, a little background. Uh, let's see. Was in financial services for a long time, 2018 ish. Yeah. Kind of had this idea after a hunt with my brother of building a trekking pole for hunters. Um, got out of a partnership I was in, kind of kicked that off, gave you a set of poles early on. That's really what launched the brand. Um, and for the last four years, just been growing it. And at that time I was like, let's just sell this nice trekking pole you invented in your garage okay cool yeah, was that cool. was the end of it that was and then, and uh, then you met brinker and i met this guy and brinker's like this could be the next <laughs> i don't know north face i said what you're doing sucks <laughs> no <laughs> what happened all. there david brinker's our other guest uh you um you hail from or uh, the northwest oregon and also specifically not portland you were the first employee at sitka so the fourth oh well employee or i've been given some critical feedback oh, from my oh, right so, I was, okay the haters i was the four i was the there was there was two <laughs> two there was two founders okay. I, I try to listen to feedback there's two right? founders jeff am i trying to improve you do. myself you do yeah you're here today i'm here today <laughs> i love it i was the fourth i'm employee. proud of you okay okay i was the first full-time past the founders and the brother but yes mm. i was gotcha. at Sitka for 11 years yep Okay, folks, if you like the show and you want to support us and you're in the market for a brand new sleeping bag, check out the Peaks Solace 15. We spent a lot of years designing that sleeping bag in partnership with Peaks Equipment. The Peaks sleeping bag has so many innovative features. The old backpacker saying that two is one and one is none is never more true. And this sleeping bag is so versatile. It can be a quilt. It can be a jacket. It's got armholes. It's a uh, three-way zipper. It regulates temperature really well. It's got the hood. It's pretty remarkable. Go check it out. Use the code GRITTY and you'll save. And it helps us keep doing what we do. Now, let's get back to the show. Okay. So, uh, you met Bryce. Just a little backstory real quick. And um, somehow, Bryce was telling me the idea to, to... to build peaks into something more than just like a trekking pole only type company. Yeah, Bryce, 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 and I met at a actually a what do they call those shared conference rooms? Like where you can schedule meetings. Uh, uh, it's like a building, but uh, you can like you, a Regis office, like we kind of like whatever. WeWork type situation. We yeah. met in this office building, and uh, he said a, a rental office basically. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was actually funny. Was it was 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 Sitka meeting in the same office that day, or was it the day before? Somebody, I can't remember. Yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah, it was yeah, Sitka. Yeah, yeah. So it was a little awkward for me. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we sat down. Bryce throws down his trekking poles and this uh, box that he's been using to ship these things in. Yeah. And the first thing I noticed is the box said, ski, hunt, hike? Hike, hike hunt, ski. Yeah. Hike, hunt, ski. Yeah. And uh, and then, so basically, I, I was like, man, super. I mean, obviously, you've done well. You've sold quite a few of these things. But I think th- you're thinking too small. Yeah. And yeah. uh the end of the meeting was like I think this could, this is an equipment company. This isn't a trekking pole company. And that's what kind of kicked off our relationship. And after a few meetings in Bozeman, I I'm kind of a gut guy. I just really I I really liked Bryce. I liked the team he he started to assemble and I love the concept. I always thought it was a missing hole in this industry. Mm-hmm. So, um I I I was on a plane home after a couple meetings and I sent him an email. I said, "Hey, Let's go, man. Yeah. yeah I, I'll give you 10 years of, of some time. And I, I literally said that. Yeah. And uh, I said, let's build this thing. And uh, that's how it started. And I'm still, so I haven't got fired. Well, I've been fired multiple times. <laughs> See, multiple times. Yes. But like, I, I tend dude, to, I, he's that's on like pre- crying. Not, he's on permanent probation. That, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's like crying wolf to me at this point. So if you tell me this I'm fired, <laughs> you better like actually physically remove me. Otherwise, I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to give away another you know, set of trekking poles. <laughs> You know what's funny is this is like uh this this goes to show how when you're building companies, building brands or teams for anything, you need uh an assortment of people that each bring something different to the table. Yeah. Because I when I when, the way I stumbled onto Bryce and the trekking poles, I had just returned from a hunt with Dustin Rowe 
and we were hunting up with backcountry BC and beyond. And I take my favorite like black diamond trekking poles that I had used for probably five or six years. I had a nostalgic sort of affinity for these things. It wasn't healthy. And I was like, where are they today? Th- so I left them. Oh. In BC, somewhere uh, in BC, allegedly. on accident at Dustin's house. Oh no! And uh, and I was I was like, oh my gosh! I left them somewhere in the mountains. Okay, so then I was like hiking for like the second week in a row, the Wasatch Front. You know, like I do every day. I'd climb up that mountain three miles up and back with a heavy pack, and I didn't have poles. And I'm like, this is bad. Like, this is so different without poles. I need to get poles. And I had spun into the, into like REI, but I was just so annoyed by all the Z poles and the like, the, 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 don't bash the, the Z twisty poles. ones and don't bash the Z poles. Okay. There's, uh, I'm warming People, up to, there's a, there's a niche that loved the Z poles. Look, anyway, they, they were like, it was I digress. Like, it, <laughs> shut up, Jeff. It's like they were making poles that weren't quite what I wanted made. And uh, anyway, I was on Instagram and I just posted a story and I said, hey, um, anybody out there got a great pole that has clip locks instead of twist locks? It does this, does that, is strong, but, you know, threw it out there. Yeah. And I got all these boom, 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 you know, uh, DMs that came in. And next thing you know, uh, I get a phone call and I think it was Ryan Bassham, uh, you know, worked with you over at Sitka. And he's like, Hey, I know this guy and he's got a trekking pole. He's made kind of in his garage and, uh, he calls them sissy sticks and he wants you to use them. <laughs> I was like, that is so lame. And I also was like, I hate the name. And also I love the name. And also <laughs> what makes this guy think he can build a trekking pole. Anyway, we get in touch. We talk only because Bassham is a friend and he called in the favor. Right. Otherwise, I would have ignored it like I do most sort of things like that. Right. And you, we got in touch and we talked for a while. And I was like, well, send them to me. I'm going to New Zealand with Ryan Lampers and I'll test the crud out of them. And then we'll see how they perform when I get back. I'll let you know. And I, I try to set expectations as I do with anybody that sends me some product. Look, I probably won't like them. So don't be <laughs> upset. Um, but I'll give you feedback and, um, you know, but if they're great, I'm happy to, to, uh, use them and, and tell people about them. And you're like, okay, you took me up. I'd used them. They were incredible. I was like, wow, these are not, these are legit. These are the real deal. And we came back, reported, reported back to you on things we didn't like, or that didn't work. And, uh, you went back to the drawing board and then pretty soon we were, you're like, we're selling a lot of trekking poles. Let's uh, work on this together. And then our vision was, cool, we'll have a little trekking pole uh, business. business, and yep. y- you and I will um, help people and also make some money. Win-win. Yep. Win-win. And that was the our vision. That was the vision. The max vision. <laughs> and so then you have someone like Brinker come along that has a whole different level of creativity and vision, which also makes him sort of flighty. and Annoying. And... and, and <laughs> Depends on the day. <laughs> Depends on the day. Well, I'm, I'm hyper aware of the flaws. <laughs> so. The thing is, then you combine that with uh, us testing Lampers and I and breaking yeah. them and coming back. And you guys, this is the coolest part about working with Peaks and some other companies we work with. We would go and use gear, go back to the company and say, guys, you got to redesign these pockets on this pack and you got to do this and, and you got to fix that and this this tweak here on this piece of equipment and that piece of equipment um, would make it so much better. Trust us. Like we're the guys we live in this gear. Yeah. And um, there, most of the companies would say, Oh, thanks for the feedback. No, we got this. And so we're like, okay, well, I guess we'll just keep using it the way that it is. But then there was a handful that we'd go back to and say that to, and they're like, we got you. We're going to go and we're going to make these changes that you're requesting. And then they would, make the change. And then we'd test it some more and go, oh, you know what would be better, even better if you did this. And those companies that are willing to listen to the actual heavy consumer user and follow their feedback and put those, I don't know what the solutions are all the time. I know what the problem is. Yeah. I can say to you, dude, I hate this. 
It's pissing me off. Right. And then I can throw out some lame fix. What if you just sewed something on right here and then stuck it in the ground? And you're like, yeah, let me find the solutions, <laughs> which has been good. Well, Jason's been phenomenal at that, yeah. right? Like when we when we get feedback from you guys. Who's Jason? I, oh, Jason Belair, the Fresh Prince is what he likes to call himself. <laughs> He's our designer. He's our designer. Uh He's really good about kind of thinking outside the box of mm-hmm. ways to improve product based on feedback, but also have it actually be functional. Yeah. And so, I, you know, the Gators were a perfect example of that. I can't tell you how many times Lampers was on the mountain using his inReach to text me and say, oh. this isn't going to work. These things are falling apart. In panic. Like, in panic. Yeah. Like he always. Yeah. Uh, he's always in panic. Because it's going to ruin his hunt. Yeah. Uh, Dude, when Bryce gets those messages, uh, oh, he has me. to call me for like counseling. <laughs> <laughs> it's seriously like. Dude, I just got a message from Lampers on the TP. Like, we got to. I'm like, dude. Rinker's like, settle down. He's like sleep <laughs> provide, de- yeah. de- de- deprived and hungry and grumpy yeah. in the back country. <laughs> he needs butter. We're going to be okay. You know? <laughs> so anyways, Jason just is excellent Good at that. coming up with solutions. So. I have a question for you, Jeff, and then I got one for you, Brinker. Uh, Jeff, you've been, uh, you're helping us uh, sell and and introduce people to the gear here at this event. Uh, You've been part of other companies and brands that you've supported and done work with. Yeah. Uh, Have you seen, what do you think of the peaks from your third party here? Yep. Uh, No pressure. Uh, what's What's your overall take? Um, my overall take is it's very, it feels like a, a family. Um, I love the fact that, uh, I mean, I'm here, I said it the other day, yeah. I'm, I'm here because of Bryce, right? Like, I appreciate Bryce, I appreciate his attitude, I appreciate the people that he surrounds himself with. Um, overall, it says a lot, I mean, even the feedback and stuff that you guys are talking about doesn't take it personal, and yet takes it enough serious to make changes the legitimate yeah. changes if they make sense so as a whole i think peaks has a really good culture yeah and that's why i'm here is i like the culture you build the culture and the culture will build the team yeah. and and that's yeah. what's happening you're watching this team grow um exponentially right now it's fun. and and good people i mean across the board i i meet people like like live say yeah. i mean i don't want to I don't want to say too many good don't things, but, ego, don't but, you? Okay. but you know, the more I get to know, let us say the more I like him. He's yeah. a really good dude. You met our booth, babe. Oh yeah. 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 Suzanne Call. Yeah, she's amazing. She's, Wait, I, I like to call I, her. I thought I was the booth. Babe. Not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> yeah, your wife's Your awesome. hair's not nearly blonde enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So Brinker, um, question for you. You've been a part of a number of companies and even consulting with those that are trying to grow a company, both inside and outside of the uh, hunting industry. Right. Yep. Um, what do you, what is, what is the ingredient that lead to a successful, you know, creation of a brand like this? And cause I'd say it's pretty successful. It's, it's growing, it's still in its infancy, I'd say, but, but what is it that, um, cause a lot of people would love to, entrepreneurially you know launch something and come up with it but um if it were that easy everybody would do it Mm -hmm. um i think it's a couple things it always comes back to well it's probably three things is what i would boil down to one you have to undeniably solve a problem that people value Mm -hmm. yes right whether you're, you're building a product or a service if you do it in a way that really doesn't provide value to people Usually what happens is founders think their idea is really cool. And I do this too. A lot of times people think that when I'm like my posts and when I'm giving advice like this, it's it's like, I'm like, the, the I'm, ooh, I'm, ooh. I'm also talking to myself yeah, self, right? Yep. because we do this as creatives. We're like, dude, I got the idea, man. And you take it out there and people are like, dude, you don't have the idea. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to undeniably solve a problem. Uh-huh. You know? And uh, I've seen products where the brand is awesome, like the, they have the money, they have, but the product or the idea just doesn't really solve a problem that people mm. have. Because when people have a problem and they're annoyed, like you say, yeah. they're willing to pay money for right. you for your service or your product. So you got to have the product. Yeah, you got to have the product. Number two is is you have to have connectivity somehow. Because once you have a product, if you have relationships and connectivity 
for people to use that product or service and tell other people about it. For example, I own a real estate company. Mm-hmm. Tried all kinds of marketing in the real estate world. Really, the only thing that works is one thing, relationships. If yeah, you provide a great, sure. assuming you have a good service, like your product is like, man, you did a great job for us. We'd like to yeah. use you again. They're yeah. going to go tell their friend. Their right. friend's going to. And that's really the, the way you build a real estate company. And I don't think it's that much difference for this. If we build a sleeping bag and it doesn't work, it actually works the opposite. Right. That friend tells the other friend it sucks. Then yeah. the other friend says, I heard it sucks. Yeah. And it's really bad. So you have to have a great product that solves a problem and you have to have connectivity somehow. You, either you need to get out there and grind the pavement and make a bunch of friends or you need to connect to people that already have the friends that you want. Right. Mm. And then the third thing is, is you have to have the brain power and the resources to execute. Yeah. Right. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you need millions of dollars. I actually think... I'm, I've, at this point in my life, I've come to the conclusion that may, that actually might hurt you if yeah, you have too I, much dude, money. I agree 100%. Um, I've seen it happen both ways, yeah. right? People that raise a bunch of money and then they just blow it. Or like you do it, like Bryce is doing it where it's basically self-funded. And so, um, but somehow you have to, I mean, it's still the reality. You have to be able to pay for it and have the resources yeah. somehow. And yeah. and and p- also part of that is the when I said brain power is like, the core people have to have knowledge of how to navigate a million problems. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to have, you have to have the, the brain resources and the the financial resources to come out the other side of a million problems that come your way because Mm. starting a company is basically just high level problem solving. Yeah. Even if you have the first two things. That's it. That's Every so, day. How many problems yeah. do you think you have to solve a day? Uh, hundred? Yeah. Hundred? At least. At least. And they're miniature. I mean, every email is a problem, right? Yes. So you're solving a problem. And if you're the day. CEO, I heard Elon Musk say this the other day. If you're the CEO, basically all he does all day is all of the biggest problems distilled down mm-hmm. to to basically equations no one else can solve. That's mm-hmm. all. Everything yeah. on his plate is a big pile of shit. Oh, yeah. And that's all he gets. He doesn't get to do the fun stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, man, what if he did yeah. this to the Tesla? Nope. That's for the engineers. <laughs> He's like, how do we not go bankrupt? How are you going to have enough yeah. cash? How do you talk yeah. to the board? I mean, whatever, you know? So does, that's cool. Sorry for uh, the long-winded answer. No, that's it. great. I keyed into something you said when you said, uh, you know, you've got to uh, solve a problem, like hardcore solve a problem. Um, I look at sort of content creation in the form of answering a question. Mm. My my job is first and foremost to answer specific questions, like ans- teach people basically. Yeah, yeah. Answer questions that they have. Some questions they don't know they have. Yes. If I can get to those, and they go, yeah. "Oh crud! I I didn't even know that. Now I know that." Um, I feel like that is key and part of answering people's questions through the form of content, like how do you hunt and uh, how much is your pack weigh and h- how hard is it to pack out an animal and what do you eat when you're back there? Those are all questions you're answering mm-hmm. through, through an entertaining format, like a hunt show. Yes. But solving the gear issue is sort of answering questions. Yeah. But, but um, what I needed was through, through my platform was to be able to, to be able to, Get someone like Bryce and you, you know, the whole team to br- build those answer, you know, fix the problems that are product related. Right. And that helps me then answer the questions better too. Yeah. And yeah. the most valuable businesses are going to solve the problems that no one even thinks they have yet. Like the best example is the iPhone. I was right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. That's the best example probably in, in the history of businesses. Yep. Yeah. But like even just walking around here, you see people. Uh, booths that may they may solve a problem but the problem's already been solved yep 10 times over and that doesn't mean that they won't be successful it just oh. means they won't be the iphone right but if you can find the oh. problems that people they're like man i didn't even know i ha- that you're right that does yeah. annoy the shit out what of a me. steve job i say this all the time people don't know what they want until you tell them that's right yeah it's that same mm-hmm. kind of situation and steve had the the ability to be like dude why are you using a flip phone you idiot yeah. i could put your whole computer in your phone and then you can just do that. You know, you, it's been great having you in the room because you are uh, super creative and you bring up things that none of the rest of us think about. Um, when it comes to, tell me this, uh, you, you know, I don't think I've ever asked you this or had you a- voice it. Um, Why am I so flighty and annoying? <laughs> no, we've talked about that. <laughs> no, no, the, uh, no. Um, what is it that Bryce brings to the table? I've said this to many people. One thing that I love about Bryce is 
he's kind of a king maker and one like he's a wealth maker that's for sure it feels like uh everyone in bryce's orbit is um expanding their wealth potential and i haven't come across a lot of people that have done that like okay if you're associated with this person you're going to grow in in many ways but especially in that financial sense he's bestowed a lot of great uh, benefit on many of us through through what he's done i love that but more than that um what is it that makes bryce uniquely capable of doing what we now he couldn't have done it without me and he couldn't have done <laughs> it without you probably yeah no one can but <laughs> no but not I'm like literally i, I really like, couldn't have done it without jeff you, yeah <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally, you know, enough about you. That's right. And what so, about me? And <laughs> we, I mean, you're oh you're getting there. Okay, so like, you're gonna surpass Livesey soon. Okay, but no, but seriously, my my best answer is, and I don't remember the name of the personality test I took when yeah. I was at at Gore Sitka. No, we did this personality test things. one time, but this one I did a few of them. This uh-huh. one was actually really cool. I mean, the spreadsheets, a fa- uh, like, um, what do you call it? Fetish is a little strange, but guys. but here's somebody's got to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here's the here's what I legitimately. Well, there, there's a couple reasons, but the first yeah. one I'll give you like the business reason. I think successful CEOs typically fall into a category. Yeah, and okay, it's, it's those that are that can not very many people can be data driven and have vision. With a little dose of creativity, that's like on this personality test I did. There was like four dimensions, yeah, and those two dimensions sit on opposite sides of the right. matrix. It's very rare. Yes, and it's most, hard to be creative and also over data driven, data driven, and actually pre- like pretty good with numbers. Yep. Um, but if you start stacking the successful CEOs of the past in there, they typically fall into that category. Or you'll have like a crazy creative that always has a co-founder yeah. that's data driven, right? Yeah, right, because they don't complement each other. Bryce, um. Those it has traits. some creativity and he's actually pretty good with like vision. Mm-hmm. He's got balls, but he's also scientific. And oftentimes what you'll see with founders, if they don't have the right team around them, mm-hmm. they have balls and they're creative, but they're a total train wreck, right? On the, on the mm-hmm. data drip, like actually the fundamentals of keeping a business alive, they're a train wreck. They yeah, should right. not they, have the keys to the bank, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. And I, I, I will tell you this from my perspective, I have to hire people around me that I drive them crazy and they drive me crazy because I fall into the kind of creative zone yeah. where I don't, I go by gut a lot. I have, I have people that work for me on the real estate side that when they first started working for me, they wanted to strict, like strangle me. I believe it. And I had to call <laughs> them and be like, look, I want to strangle you, okay. yeah. but we need each other. Yeah. I need you to tell yeah. me and keep me organized and like. Let me see the details. Otherwise, I'm just going to run us right into a wall. Right. And for me, that's one of the things that I, I liked about Bryce is because I have to have that around me. Mm-hmm. And he brings that because I'll throw this crazy idea, which in the, in the realm of creative people, I, I'm really not like, I know people that are like, wow, that guy is really creative. Yeah. I've but I, I have some vision too. Yeah. But I'll throw something out and he has a good knack to be like, dude, that's stupid. Or like, no, that's there's something there. And I need that. I have to have that filter to be successful myself. That's what I appreciate about him. He's got the mix. Not to say that he doesn't have stuff to work on like we all do. Yeah. Sure. But I think if that fundamental, like you can be really successful as a CEO if you have those things, but it's pretty I, rare. I, dude, I hear what you're saying. You also can't be a freaking, be- Randy Newberg told me this one time, never let, if uh, if a CEO is strictly a bean counter, uh, if a CEO is strictly a bean counter, they will run it in the ground. Yeah. And he's a CPA. He's like, trust me, dude, I've seen this. You can't let the bean counter take all the leash. Yeah. They need a little bit of dose of craziness and creativeness and gut. 100%. Otherwise, they're never going anywhere. So I think you got a good balance of both of them. Uh, buddy. I appreciate that. I I don't really feel like I'm any of those things you described. I mean, except <laughs> yeah, for the, it's except you're for humble. The, except for the data guy, I do actually like spreadsheets. He loves it, <laughs> dude. And our parts, of, and sometimes on conference calls when him and the team are diving into these spreadsheets, I'm literally like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. just tell me what you need me to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we have to have that, right? Yes, obviously. Yeah. But I think as a as a founder, especially the way that we did it, where we didn't have a bunch of money, you know, we've bootstrapped the entire thing, and so we've had to. All of us have had to like dive into areas of the business that we're not experts in, right? Mm-hmm. Like I had to learn Adobe Illustrator. I had to yeah. figure out 
logistics from a import export standpoint, like all these things that I'd never done before that I've had to learn how to do. And everybody on our team has had to stretch themselves yeah. to, uh, to learn. New you actually skills, bring up but- a really good point. My answer before was probably my B answer. My A answer is, is he's an expert problem solver. Mm. He, Bryce can solve any problem. He's really intelligent guy and he's really even keeled where like these little things don't really rile him up. Even the big things. I mean, like he just went through a really rough patch in life and I know it was very upsetting obviously, but like he's a very, he's going to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. I have confidence in that where Mm -hmm. I've met other founders where I'm like, dude, I don't know if you're going to make it through the gauntlet, buddy. Yeah, for sure. I, we hunted together, uh, elk and, uh, Bryce kept up. Work just as hard as <laughs> except me. for when we had to like <laughs> bend over and act like we were. Like, <laughs> do you guys he's, have video of this? Oh, I wish we did. <laughs> no, we don't because this dude has like the back of like I don't know what's the strongest animal on the planet, right? <laughs> and he's like, hunch over, act like you're an elk, and we're like walking, <laughs> dude. And I'm like, there's, oh there's, my gosh, like there's literally three, four hundred elk <laughs> screaming, and there's like six giant bulls, and they're all in this massive herd, and there's a it's an open grassy slope, but there's just so many it's chaos. And there's some sketched out, but other ones are like, I don't care. There's too much good sex going on here, you know, and all this. And <laughs> I'm like, Bryce, we're just going to go straight at them. Just crawling on our backs. So we did. And we got to like within like 170, 80 yards. So I'm like, all we need to do is close that last 80. Some of the elk got up. They were like, we don't like this. I'm like, Dude, I'm putting my bow above my head like it's a set of antlers. <laughs> I'm bending over. You're going to grab my hips. Whoa. And you're going to bend over. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a four-legged animal. And we're going to like walk up and I'm going to cow call. the Gaylord Hotel. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to cow Welcome. call. As, <laughs> Tonight. As, as we just like close in. And literally. <laughs> we have no footage of this? Literally. I'm oh like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We should. I'm like coming in. <laughs> this and is I'm going, legitimately a seminar we can have done here. Yes, it's right. like the Trojan horse of archery. What <laughs> well, happened here? We're well, getting, we're going it gets in. Better. It gets we're, better. Like we're bent over and we're like making our way. And I'm like, we look like an elk. We're oh yeah. Going, and we're cruising and stuff. And all of a sudden, I'm looking to the side, and all of a sudden, a bunch of these elk are getting all <laughs> sketched out. And they're like, <laughs> that's what? the ugliest damn elk I've ever seen. Like, like we were golden for like three or four minutes. Yeah. And we're we're on the finish line, dude. <laughs> And I'm like, what is going on? I look back, and Brat's, uh, Bryce's back is so sore. He's like fully upright. <laughs> I'm you like, gave up on the mission, dude. Bro. Dude, 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 I was like, gave up. get down, Bryce. What are you doing? Oh, get down. Dude, it was so... And he's like, my back is on fire. I'm like, suck it up. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Man, hey, you need to watch Remember the Titans I'm like, or something, I don't care bro. You're, you're almost there. Yeah, I'm was, like, I don't care if that, your back is on fire. <laughs> you bend over. That, Again! <laughs> like miracle. Hey, Jeez. mission accomplished. <laughs> Did we, you kill one? Yes, yeah. he killed a great bull. Yeah. All right. Big six by six. Yeah. We, 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 finally, he sucked it up a little bit, and, yeah. and we got right in there. This was and obviously pre pickleball so injury, right? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. like ranging. There's bulls everywhere, and we we definitely some caught our wind, and th- th- it just turned into chaos. Oh, it was total madhouse. <laughs> yeah, and none of it's on film. No, nope. well, I was busy so killing. I watched um, my dad and his best hunting buddy when I was 12 years old do that on 26 mule deer bucks. Wow, they cl- crawled through. The, yeah, the big ones were bedded in the back, and I watched them crawl within 15 yards of fork and horns. They had their recurve. Well, the front guy had his recurve on his head. And they just did this, and there was a fork. During the rut, thing. sometimes, they just don't know Dude, what's my up. dad, when I was young and I would hunt with my dad, I remember one time we were walking through the woods, and he said, you know, sometimes if you bend over and walk like you're an elk, they just kind of ignore you. And I always thought, no, they don't. There's that, there's no truth in that. And <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless you stand up in the middle. They do. Yeah, then, yeah. Then, you, <laughs> then you cause some problems. You're like, wait a second. What? Yeah. How did the human grow out of that like, elk? I, seriously, we were, we were, they were so like, oh, there's an elk over there. So chill. Yeah. And then as soon as Bryce was standing <laughs> up, they were like, some bunch of cows stood up like, that ain't right, you know? And when they kind of split up, um, I had multiple bulls to crisscross in, and we got to this spot, and I couldn't cross. There's too much distance between us. And yeah. I'm like, so I waited for all the elk to climb over the top and then break, crest the top. Yeah. And then my plan was to close the disc, sprint to the top, and shoot one, right? Like, okay, 
it's Geronimo. And uh, so as soon as they crested, I just booked it to the top. And he just left me. As if you can keep up, great. <laughs> uh, but I left him. I just sprinted. I didn't know where Bryce was. Looking for his icy hot. I, I, had, <laughs> I had no idea where he was. Dude, I was, I was going to kill. I was so pissed off yeah, that I hadn't would... killed yet. And uh, I was running on a little bit of rage and determination. Imagine and, that. I and have a hard time <laughs> picturing it. <laughs> hey, people don't get to see that side of me. Uh, a few do. Um, and I got to the crest. And then I saw a bull. And I went laser focus. And I'm like, that's a nice bull. He's dead. And I started moving in. And I'm dodging out because they're kind of just a big herd. And I'm using this dip and I'm doing this. And I get on a bull and I'm ranging. I'm about to shoot him. And I feel this tap on my shoulder. And I turn around and there's Bryce. <laughs> and he goes, he points to the left. And there's a bigger bull standing right there. <laughs> oh, no. I was like, I was, as soon as he, he tapped me on the shoulder, I'm like, whoa. There's a dude behind me. Yeah. And he's like, right. And I look and I'm like, oh my gosh, because I was about to kill this big, heavy five by five. And there's this big six walking up. And I'm like, oh, new target. And uh, basically, I just drew my, I ranged, drew my bow and shot him. Yeah. Um, it was quick. It was like, but if Bryce hadn't tapped me on the shoulder, I'd have shot a nice five by five. I should have let him shoot the five by five so I could shoot the big six. <laughs> yeah. But that was very giving. I was you. like, you know what? Brian would have been he hearing been, an arrow whiz out of his back. <laughs> he had been yeah. suffering for six, seven six, days. Six, seven days. Yeah. And he called me and he's like, dude, I need you to bring me food. So yeah. I like loaded up a pack full of food, came in and was like, I'll hunt with you for a few days. And uh, I think it was the second day I was with you that we. I didn't bring elk. food. I brought enough for a few days and I ran out of food and I'm like, but I don't want to leave till I tagged out. Yeah. And then Bryce saved me. And uh, <laughs> from that point on, we were brothers. <laughs> he also helped me pack that sucker out and it was straight uphill. We had to call my brother. It was like eight miles. As well, it was mm -hmm. a long ways in. Yeah. In the snow, uphill, well, uphill both ways. Snow. But I mean, but, I, you get to know somebody when you hunt you with do. them, you, you know, on another level. And, uh, that was so fun. It's one of the funnest hunts I've, yeah, I've done. Cool. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it was just like one intense day. Uh, it was. I mean, I mean, those are the best. Those were rut fests. Yeah. It was. Someone asked special. me yesterday, what my, do I like Roosevelt's or Rockies better? And I said, I love Roosevelt's, but you can't beat a rut fest with Rockies because mm -hmm. that yeah. just doesn't happen with Roosevelt's because there's yeah. not enough of them. Yeah. First of all. And second of all, they just, they're don't dispersed. Like, I think. Yeah. They just don't act like, like yeah. when you get, into those herds of 100, 200, 300. That takes open country. It does. Because if you're hunting like a unit that's real brushy, even a Rocky Mountain unit, there's, I noticed the herds are eight to 12 cows. Yeah. Yeah. When you go to the open spaces, right. it's 60, 70 yeah. cows. You yep. find some spots in those, like you've been in Montana, yeah. Wyoming, Idaho, some of these real open country, you got one bull and they got 50 cows each. Yeah. And those two herds clash. It's awesome. It's but when best. you're in other areas where it's real, it's like 12, 12 yeah. is a big herd. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of what happened on this hunt. There was actually two groups. There was a ravine kind of two groups, one on this side, one on this side. And there, you know, the, the big bulls were kind of keeping their harems apart from each other. Oh, it was majestic. And when we got in there and created chaos and they, they all of a sudden just merged and Love exploded. That. That's and the best. It was insane. The bulls it was insanity. didn't care if there was humans there. No. They were so desperate to try to sort out their herds. Well, and that bull that he ended up shooting, he was so, you could tell he was so tired from just trying to keep control of his herd. He was like panting like a dog as he was coming up this hill. Oh, he was blind as a bat. Yeah. He was, was just like coming up, like yeah. oblivious I love and that. tired. All the cows had mm. left him behind. He yeah. was like, damn it. I got to chase this guy. And I'm like, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. fun. It was a lot of good Yeah, time. that was fun. I think, um, you know, back to uh, growing a business, because I'm really, you know, I do that. I found like the same thing with the creativity. I listened to Tim Ferriss podcast and he talked about like failures of creative people or creative people failures. And he had statistics on how many people that are on the creative side and how like a photographer or a video maker or filmmaker or something like, which is kind of what I play in. And, um, and he talked about how much, uh, their failure rate was, how high it was that they actually are some of the most talented photographers are some of the poorest people you're, you'll meet. Some of the, the yeah. most famous painters that were the most talented painters because their mind for making money. Yeah, they don't care about it. They don't care about it for one, yeah. but they also 
don't really have the uh, the skills either. The 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 sort of like you were talking earlier, David. Yeah. The the sort of uh, men- mathematical sort yes. of uh, pragmatic way of looking yes. at the world. It's not in their nature. They're creative and open and new ideas and free flowing and yeah, because that would shackle their ideas. Correct. Because if you look yeah. at everything through that lens, it would really f you up. I mean, well, and they want everybody else to enjoy their creation. Yeah. So they're yeah. not they're I not always... looking at a way to monetize it. They're looking at a way to just share it. Like my wife was like that, where she in the dance world, she was incredible, right? Mm-hmm. Like incredible choreographer, incredible coach, like built several programs throughout the years that just flourished and thrived. But she had no idea how to charge people for under for services all the yeah. time. And so I always had to have the conversation with her, honey, you you can't undersell yourself here. Like, yeah, you need to charge double what you're you're trying to charge. I'm and curious. she was like, no, I just want everybody to be able to participate. I don't want anybody to not be able to do it. Well, that was one of the things Ferris was mentioning is most of these people that are creative would do it for free because they yeah. want to do it. Yeah. Getting paid is sort of like not the chief, chief priority. Well, and it also yeah. kind of sometimes can make it feel dirty. Yeah, true. yeah. I don't want to charge anybody. This is true. Oh, no, for sure. This like, is my passion. This is my love. Yeah. I want to share it. I well, yeah. and, and you'll get accused of, you know, uh, your all your motives being just because you want right. to be rich. Or that's, something. And that's because there's people yeah. at the opposite end that are only trying to make money, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And you people can sniff that shit out really well now, especially now with the internet. Right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. But if you notice the people that are uber successful in any industry, the best analogy for me is in music. Like if mm-hmm. you look at the most legendary artists of all times, they started off doing something that wasn't mainstream. No one really liked it yet. Yeah. And then it'd be like, you look at like Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson, mm-hmm. Johnny Cash is a great example, right? Like that wasn't what was going on at the time. It was like gospel and, and Johnny Cash came out with a prison song. And yeah, like, yeah. Just, and he's like, I don't give a and like, I'll walk in the the producer Elvis's producer and just show him my prison song, and all of a sudden, then everybody started writing prison songs. Yeah. But like Chris Stapleton, right? That wasn't really a thing until it was a thing. Yeah. My point is, is like that's where the greatest products come from, or when people just do it for the pure love pure, of it. Yeah. And then someone else monetizes it, as opposed to starting off trying to monetize it. Yeah. I, I'm working on a film, couple a two part film right now. It's an hour each episode. Uh, for years, I've made longer, some hour, hour and a half long films. The conventional wisdom has been like 25 minutes, but I don't make the film because I'm trying to make maximize my revenue. I make it for an experience. I, I want to change people's lives. I want them to sit down and I feel like the hour and 15 minute episode had to be that long to accomplish what I wanted, but it didn't make sense financially because I could take that same footage. No one knows that if I gave them 30 minutes of that film and said an hour and 15, they'd like the 30 minute version and sure. I could move on to the next thing. Yeah. It, if, it doesn't make a whole ton of sense if you're trying to just maximize profits, at least in the short term to put together and spend all those hours and time and energy making something. And for years, I could make way more money off of a podcast episode than I can a film. The cost of the camera, the cost of the years of, you know, all the desk, like I could just sit down and do a quick podcast and get enough views to sell product. And, but it's not, that's not why I do it. Money's like way down the list of my motivations. Right. But I have had to work hard to try to make the earning of the income a priority. Yeah. Because if I don't, then I can't the lifestyle employ other away. people. Right. I can't grow. I can't expand. I can't actually uh, get another camera guy. And, right. uh, you know, so there's, it's, it's a challenge. But what you said earlier, Brinker, about if you're a really creative person, it really helps to bring someone else along that is your opposite. You now you fight, but it's, so I'm like you, I kind of hire an accountant. I hire the the numbers person. I hire the administrative person because I was failing on a lot of levels until I hired someone else to do it. And then I asked Brad on the content side, there's certain types of content I don't want to bother with. I'm bored of it. And so I'll, I'll not do it. 
and bringing someone like Brad on, he's like, dude, I, I love that. I'll do it. It takes a, uh, it's a hit to the ego though, to do that. What you're talking about, like the way that I look at myself is I'm kind of like making a big mess and people are like, I hire people to pick it up behind me. Like my bookkeeper, <laughs> my, my transaction coordinator, like all the different detail people I need around me to be. You're successful. harder on yourself than I am. <laughs> I, I don't mind I do it. the same I like thing it. and I'm just like, true, suck thing. it up. No, I, no, I, I suck at this, this, and this, live with it. Right, no. Bryce? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. And I'm not really hard on myself. I'm just honest with myself. Like, I'm just not good at those things. Yeah. And I never, I agree. One of the I'm, things that I'm drives me way. crazy about big corporate America, mm-hmm. and we used to do this at Gore too, they, they want you so badly to be good at what you're not good at. Like yeah. they fo- like yeah. you got to do this review and hear all about how I'm not organized and I <laughs> this and that. Like how many times can you tell me that? I know what, but what I'm good at is actually what makes you money. Hire someone else to do that. Sh-. Mm-hmm. Like I actually think there's a new mentality and um, there should be. Gary V talks about this a lot. He's like, quit worrying. I mean, yes, you do need to improve your flaws. That's yeah. like a good way to grow, but don't over hyper focus on it. Just hire someone else to do that stuff. And I, I, I've been lately calling it, I didn't coin this term at all, but my magic zone. Mm-hmm. I try to spend as much time in my magic zone as possible. And that's where I can be the most successful that's, yeah. those are the things that i'm yeah. the best at and i know it everybody else well, knows it that's where you become the multiplier magic zone, that's right? true. I, i've never that's heard it put the magic, the magic zone, zone that's in between the shrooms good. as well it's an oregon <laughs> thing yeah you, <laughs> you got a microdose to get that i'm just kidding i'm kidding this is a that's, this is we don't talk about that on this podcast <laughs> That's recognizing your strengths, yes. though, and and then using that yes. moving forward. Which there's a lot of books written on that, and that's what I love. Like even up here, there's a lot of personalities, and yet we overlap in certain things. Yes. And Michael Gerber wrote a book, E Myth Revisited. I think uh, it's called oh, The I've Entrepreneurial. Read that. Yep. Great book. I read and it at BYU. A lot of the stuff that we good talk to great about, is what he, that's what good, he talks good about. Good to great, yeah. yeah, is another amazing yeah. book. Uh, Jim Collins. It doesn't mean you don't need to work on your flaws. We right. all do, right? But it just means know what you're good. Know what you're good at and know what you, he calls, Bryce calls it the multiplying effect, right? Yeah. So like I could go into Bryce and be like, hey, I'd like to go through the books today. And he'll be like, dude, really? Well, like that doesn't <laughs> multiply his life. That would actually give him a headache. Yeah. Yes. But if I called him Stay and I said, lane, <laughs> if I called him and I said, hey, dude, let's work on our five-year plan. Let's dream. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love that's my magic zone, right? Yeah. Like the other day, I yeah. brought my guitar into one of these sessions, and yeah. I needed it to t- help me think of words and wordsmithing. It's really weird, yeah. but that's my magic zone. Yeah. It's not, hey Bryce, let's spend three hours going through like margins. Like, I it's just not. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Um, I, I can recall uh, getting performance reviews. Brinker, back in my early days, I I would I dodge was, neon uh, days. I t- yes, it was the <laughs> dodge neon days. <laughs> It was the Dave Ramsey get out of debt yes. days. Oh, and uh, I'm working at Corporate America and I'm an IT governance compliance uh, auditor. And I'm sitting there doing audits. Uh, I have Nike as one of my uh, clients. Um, I'm working with like a few other like telecom companies in the Portland area. And there's, there's some major companies. Oh, yeah. And um, I'm auditing their books and writing up the findings and all this kind of stuff. And um, they love me. Every every one of the clients love me and request us to be their auditor instead of a competitor because of the personal relationship that they have with me and the trust. And because I'm a solutions guy and a creative guy, yeah. and I could come up with ways to help them with their audits and, and still be in compliance. I'm not so black and white. There's other other ways to to solve this problem and meet the requirements by the law. Right. And they loved it. One thing I wasn't good at was showing up exactly at that time, punching the clock, filling out my expense report, like expense report, administrative stuff. Like I just, I just didn't do it. I went to bed on it all the time. Yep. Performance review comes around and the boss is like, dude, you suck at this, 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 and this. And we just, we just don't see how, how you're set up for, um, you know, a a raise and moving on. And it just feels like this climbing the corporate ladder. And I'm like, look, your five biggest clients request me. Yeah, right. They love me. <laughs> I am your relationship. Yeah. I could, uh, like, I, uh, no one else is even close to me in this space. And you're going to harp on that. You got 20 other people who are excelling at that. And, and can't they do harp this at thing. them that they're not creative enough. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, the reason, <laughs> there's a reason why people with my personality never go into this line of business, but there's a reason why I stand out. Yeah. Right. right. So I'm like, you're just going to have to deal with it. If you want this part of me, you have to deal with that part of me. And that's true. What you just said 
is tr- so true. And this is what I've had to swallow because the opposite works too. Like I get annoyed at people that are too anal and detailed. I work with a couple and we all the time. But you need them. But but I also have to realize and I constantly have to you can't you can't ask them to accept you as you are right. if you can't accept them as they are. Mm-hmm. Right? True. That's not fair. Yeah. Like that's not how that's how marriage works too. Yeah. You, there's like five top things that probably my our our my wife and I's arguments have been basically about the same three or four things our entire relationship. Mm-hmm. There's a few things that I'm that drive her crazy and a few things that she does that drive me crazy, but I can't ask her to forget about my flaws. Right. Yeah. If, do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, percent. Yeah. But corporate Spot America on. is really shitty at this. It would drive me And actually- mm-hmm. They are. The, the founder, one of the co-founders of Sitka, Jonathan Hart, I used to, he used to call me after he'd get his reviews and he'd be like, yeah, I could have written it myself. Because at, at, yeah. at, at, at Gore, yes. they, they do it in a way where other people- I can't, oh, it's called advocate feedback. Mm-hmm. Other people write your review. Yep. yep you're yep. all your coworkers. See, and, it's corporate America. And I then, did the same thing. And then you get a summary of what everybody says about you. And yep. I, and you sit down and you go, oh, I know who said that. I know who I know said that. that. I yeah. know who said that. That guy's a dick. <laughs> yeah. These <laughs> seven people are jealous. <laughs> yeah. And, and Jonathan's like, I literally could just write this. Do you want me to just do it for you? Yeah. yeah. Like, I know I'm, I'm 48 years old. I know what my flaws are. And that's kind of when it clicked to me. I'm like, yeah, you're right, dude. Like, it's not saying you don't need to work on your flaws, but yeah. they're always going to probably going to be your flaws. Yeah. You need to really multiply what you're good at. And then the, the, the powers to be need to get their shit together and yeah. hire people that can do the shit that you shouldn't be doing. Right. Yeah, Ferris in uh, the four hour work week, he had like the 80 20. He's yeah. like, spend 80% of the time on this stuff that you're the best at. Yep. yep. And only spend 20% on the things improving the things you suck at. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, you could spend 80% on on the part that you suck at and never really move the needle. And never hardly move it at all. Yep. It's sort of like with uh CrossFit, you know, there's certain uh ex- exercise modalities where I could work on that till the day I die, like sprinting or, or like a heavy pack and beat try to beat lampers yeah. up a mountain on a 5-mile hike. Um I'm just, I could work on that all the time and still barely, and probably not beat him mm-hmm. if I worked on it all the time, where he can work on it never and still just be there. So you start to realize, but if, but if, if Ryan needed to do like a 350 pound power, like clean and jerk, it ain't going to happen. Or if we were going to do something in, in the modalities that I seem to excel in, yeah, explosive movements, like it's just not his thing. And, and uh, so it's like, man, I could really excel in this area where I'm talented. Yeah. The more effort I put into making a film, uh-huh. I'm getting better at making film. And My actually, film gets better and better. Uh, but I could go and do the accounting side, spend all this time trying to be better at my business stuff and barely move it a, a little wow. tiny And bit. actually, you'd probably screwed up even more. Because yeah. <laughs> if you're probably like me, you didn't really <laughs> hire a bookkeeper. Yes. Uh, I know when I was in business... You know, in the corporate world, there there was this movement for anti siloed behavior within organizations. They mm-hmm. were like, you know, businesses that have silos, for whatever reason, they thought that they were less efficient than mm. those that could. Like everybody should be good at everything. Poly- yeah, like it was kind of like let's communism. cross pollinate right. everybody into the business so everybody <laughs> understands every other part of the business, and then everybody will make better decisions no. or whatever. Death and by I, committee. But- I never agreed with that. No. No. I never agreed with that. <laughs> I always was like, if Jeff's good at one thing, let's let yeah. Jeff be the best he can be yep. at that thing. And then when he's not, he'll kick it over the fence to Dave and yep. Dave will pick up the pieces. Who specializes that. in that thing. And, yeah. and I just am a huge believer in that. That's how you the let, best decisions get yeah. made too. You let people thrive at what they're good at. Right. And we used to do this. Th- we used to do this thing where we pretended that everybody can agree on everything. Yeah. So it'd be like, <laughs> it'd be like, it'd be like, hey, have you ran that by the team to see if everybody agrees? This these these yes, comments yes. would happen all the time, and, mm. and I always thought to myself, that is the most bullshit goal <laughs> I have ever heard. Plus, even if you did, it'd be the worst. It turn in from a great idea into a terrible idea, and that's how corporate, yeah, yeah like they kill good ideas the, by doing that. Th- yeah, that's what. There's certain things that people uh, sort of talk about as if it's just a net good like it's just like everybody agrees that for would be example better, right? like diversity it's just good is it like always wh- why why what makes it just good just just i don't know it's... like i don't know that it does <laughs> right there there's certain things where um people tend to just throw it out like it's a given that it yes. just is a ben it's beneficial i'm like no it's not no like 
and it's it's across the board everywhere. So when people start throwing out something like, "Well, we're just trying to diversify the team," or "We're just trying to get more consensus," yeah, more everyone buy-in. to agree, get everybody to it, buy in because it's because it. it's as if it's better. And I'm like, what 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 makes consensus make it better? Like, it doesn't doesn't always mean that. And so uh, this I hear is what actually you're why the military works the way it does. I think is for like, now. Yeah, <laughs> but like you. you, you, you once a like say a special forces team has yeah. a certain directive you let them go do their job right, right. you don't have yeah. someone screaming in their ear no don't open that door <laughs> right that no, doesn't once, know and is in once a desk the mission somewhere. once the at the highest level the strategy has been set and the yeah. go-ahead has been given that team flies in and shoots people in the face <laughs> right so change the subject a little bit on the uh before we get into more shooting the uh <laughs> the peaks I want to ask you something about behind the scenes a little bit, uh, sausage making behind sausage. the, you know, whoa, you're a great whoa. sausage maker. Yeah, right. Yeah. Sausage. Like, how is the sausage made? Actually, my question is in, uh, with peaks. Yeah. What has been, uh, one of those moments where, um, you, you were working on a product and, um, it just, it didn't turn out at all like you had planned. Good or bad. Uh, is that all of them? Everything's perfect at peace. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if any, what's uh, the most surprising product you've co- brought to market? Uh, I'll say that maybe not the most surprising product, but, uh, but I'll say the product that has been the hardest to develop and kind of had to go a direction different than what we originally that's anticipated right. was a product that's not even launched yet. The stove for the TP. Mm. Um, it has been the most challenging product for us to develop. It's taken, we started that product at the end of 2020, early 2021, and it's still not out. Yeah. Uh, and we still don't, we're, we're still arguing about it, <laughs> you know, yeah. but it's, it's so there. Like, to me, I thought this is going to be the pretty simple product, right? You get titanium sheets and you stamp them and they go together. And right. You launch a stove. Which nobody uh, does, by the way. It's like hand brakes in a garage yeah. right now. There's, right. or if cut, they cut are, and bend. everybody's doing cut. Yeah, and, bend right and now, if and it was something different, then it's it's heavy and prefabbed, and it's not a yeah. backpacker's design. Yeah. So, you hmm. know, we've we've been through more iterations. Had to start over at the drawing board with we had to hire a design for manufacturing engineer out of Colorado where we're at today to try to resolve some of the design issues with the original CAD files because they were mixing multiple manufacturing mm. processes that just conflicted. And so the wow, titanium okay. was cracking and bending, like it, it just wasn't working. And so it's been three years of trying to work through those issues and a lot of frustration, mm. way more money than I ever would have imagined. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now that we're at almost the finish, finish line, line. It is now, looking now we have a product that Dave would describe as one of those leapfrog products, yeah. right? Like the engineering behind it, the design, the functionality. It, dude, I'd say it's gonna be epic. It's one of the products I'm most excited about, uh, to be I, honest. I am too, because you know my passion for wood stoves mm-hmm. and how much I despise Yeah. The like again, it's like um it's lightweight but not and and serviceable that's yeah. kind of what's brought to market but no one really put together a wood stove that was meant to be like uh like really thought out all the way end to end it's not like like i feel like i said this before you have sort of the, we're making this in our garage and here's a little backpacker stove yep i wanted something that you'd see Big Agnes or North Face or somebody come out with, like an REI shop store would like backcountry, like some big giant brand, Patagonia comes together. They would put something together like that's on another level. But right. but you don't you can't go to any of those stores because hot tents just for some reason are not mainstream. Right. And so you're not getting any mainstream ma- major uh, production, you know, design company to to put that together and bring it to market. And I've always felt like that is such an integral, like critical piece of our backcountry kit and our hunting year round that yeah. it just shocked me that 
the best we have is some just cut and break in, in yeah and so that was what i wanted to see and yeah dude it's here we come here we go so close so it's gonna be epic uh, the, you know to answer the other part of your question i guess is you know jason is such an integral part of our team from the design perspective uh, i'll tell you that when we first started designing the sleeping bag he was coming up with some weird stuff <laughs> <laughs> and he was using some weird analogies to like yeah talk me through his creative process because uh-huh. at first i was like jason no absolutely not <laughs> and we can't call it that no <laughs> but, oh, but through that process i mean that's just the way his brain worked right it was like uh-huh. i'm gonna i'm thinking which is why way he's good outside at what he's doing, of the right. box he was looking at well, nature and how nature was operating mm-hmm. and he's like how can i this this type of flower does this and this type of animal does this and how can i take inspiration from that to like develop this product that would really integrate into a hunter's like lifestyle and functionality and all that kind of stuff and that's what makes him great and i have to dial him back a lot but i would going back to dave's point like you i have to accept that that's who jason is to get the products that we are producing well you wouldn't be able to do it without that crazy well i was gonna say that in the same way you balance david you balance Yes. Jason. Yes. In the same way. Yeah. Which again goes back to some unsung value that you bring to the table in that you, you got to be able to bring it down to reality. Yeah. You were able to take those creatives that are out there in our community, in our group, and you're able to, to strike that balance to, to maximize their creative yeah. capability. And I'll say this, it's not a fun job by any means because I'm the guy that always has to say no. You're such right? a dick. So it's a, <laughs> I have to tell Jason. Oh, me. <laughs> I hear all about it from Ryan Lampers. Oh, yeah. I, I hear to, all yeah, about I it. I have to tell Bryce Ryan. going to no. change this. How dare he not change this? I know. <laughs> I am Ryan Lampers. <laughs> yeah. So I tell Ryan no. I tell I tell Jason no. I tell not, Bassham no. To be honest though, it's not I that much. No. Like it's like you're saying no when it when it has to be said. It's a lot. Yeah. It's he does have it's to do a it a lot. I bet you he says no a lot more than he says yes. Yeah. Without but saying that no, though, you wouldn't be here today. Yes, correct. that's correct. That's <laughs> right. what I'm talking and about. And that comes down to leadership. Because right? here, here's the reality. Ideas are totally worthless without somebody that can actually bring them to life. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. anybody can have crazy, well, not everybody, but yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. right? And then someone who's just totally pragmatic and, and realistic usually isn't very successful on their own without somebody plugging them with an idea be like, ah, like the super good businessman needs someone telling them good ideas, right? Or yeah. maybe they just go out and buy businesses that are already, they're, they're run. Sh- That's what a lot of these guys are doing now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so it, Berkshire dude, Hathaway. just like everything yeah, else true. in life, if you can open your mind and put your ego aside and be like, how do I assemble a team? Like what Bryce has done mm-hmm. of all the things I need around me to be successful, then you'll be successful. Well, not necessarily, but yeah. maybe at least well, you'll have better odds. Yeah. Um, where's our consumer, uh, response at? Like what has been, I, I have anecdotal, but, uh, from a data perspective, you know, how are we, um, what, what, what are people saying that are using the products, you know, breaking products? What well, you can Google whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to Google hate, we can Google hate. Yeah, we can Google. True. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd say yeah, no, it's I, overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, when you look at the consensus of like product reviews that people leave, right? Yeah. Like overwhelmingly it's, it's Which positive. Which we have hundreds or even thousands at yeah. this point. I mean, it's overwhelmingly positive. There's always those haters that yeah. for whatever reason, you know, had a bad experience or just didn't understand how to use the product correctly. Mm-hmm. And then they want to hate on you and whatever. Yeah, that's a percentage. You, or, but we're well within- um, Oh man, we're- an, a percentage level of that. Oh, mm. yeah. Well, I think it's I, like every video I produce is going to have a certain percentage of hate. The, yes. the the narrative people really wanted to sell on us to to make themselves feel better about yeah. our success was a couple things. One, we're just rebranding stuff from China. Yep, yep. Yeah, I hate that. And uh, that's the the, that, the second that, one was that's oh, everywhere. They, they just have a bunch of big money behind them and marketing people to just buy <laughs> people off. So, and both are. Are, I'm, I'm big money. Yeah. I'm, I'm big money marketing right yeah. here. We, like, mm-hmm. we have no money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no they, money. They really no must money, not no. see our bank account. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but th- that's what people, and, and that's just normal. You know, when you, when something comes out of nowhere and people are like, wait a second, I could have had that idea and I didn't. Well, they must have big money. Oh, yeah, they yeah. must have, they well, must just be st- like, it's in, human nature. Yeah. In, in yeah. credit, in credit to you, David, um, 
I mean, I wouldn't argue that in the beginning, Bryce and I were much more basic minded. It's like, true. These guys are selling XYZ over there, and that guy's selling the XYZ over there, and they basically just sourced it out of uh, some overseas place and out boom. Of a catalog somewhere. Yeah. Just, yeah. And I was like, why why sell their stuff when I could sell my own stuff? Yeah. But you the know? vision and, expanded. Well, what happened was, in the, and early on, we did solve, Br- Bryce did, and I just recognized it and used it and told people about it. But the trek and pull thing was solving an issue for hunters. I don't think they were making poles for hunters. They were making them for backpackers. It's not right, the same right. thing. And once, uh, so I saw that, but other products to add to that, to the lineup was like, could add a lot of stuff pretty quick and easy and just yeah. make something. But you were there from the start, Dave, and you were like, if it's not absolutely different, like the sleeping bag, like the teepee, there's other sleeping bags and teepees before, yeah. like the headlamp, like these things were things, uh, gators, but they've been made before. We could have just grabbed some, all those product lines we could have grabbed overnight and been selling them a couple years before we actually had these products. Yeah. But Dave, you were like in meetings, you would be like, hey, if this isn't totally innovative and different than what anyone else has brought, then why are we doing it? Yeah. I remember that cook stove. Lampers and I were like, dude, this is great. Why do we keep selling, um, you know, jet oil? Right. Why not just sell this? Yeah. It's the same stove, just put our name on it. Yeah. And why not? Yeah. Which and, we could. And it's like, and we tried to find, well, and, and but, but what we came down to is it would, it would just be doing that. It wouldn't be a, a new solution. It's a me too. And, and yeah. sh- uh, shock alert, just about every brand in this building does do a version of what we're talking about. Like, yes, very few things in this industry are new. Like a lot of it's incremental or tailored towards the customer, right? Any brand, like especially when it comes to equipment and apparel specifically, like let's be honest. Yeah. Sitka was, I was there. Sitka was started. We sent, or Jason and Jonathan sent Patagonia to China and Arcteryx to China and said, make this in camo. Yep. Yep. And then over time. Which is fine. Like uh, totally. Uh, yeah. Over time, you you have enough uh, resources to actually start really uh, innovating, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But so there always is going to be incrementalism, I guess is what it would be called in this industry where it's like, hey, no one's ever made that for the hunter. Let's just make it for the hunter. And sometimes it might be that simple. Yeah. But I think our goal at Peaks is to, if we can't do something that's actually disrupt, undeniably solving a problem like really for our consumer, then we should probably think twice about doing it. It's not to say that we'll never do that. Heck, yeah. I don't know. I can't predict the future. Yeah. But like the stove is a great example. I'm personally the most proud of that product out of anything that we've the done. The wood stove. Yeah. The wood stove. Yeah. Because that is actually how you make things that are different, right? It takes years and a lot of money. Yeah. And I think it was not only is it going to be a great product for our consumer, but I also think it was a good ch- reality check for us too on how we build our company because I went through this with Sitka. I always tell Bryce, I bet you we only launched about half of what we started. And we spent millions of dollars developing things that never went to market or and even yeah. things I mean, that eventually did go to market and absolutely flopped. Or things that just you're not ready as a brand to take on, like the, the cook stove that you just mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. Like that died. Yeah, right. It's been a few years now and we're like and that that doesn't mean that it's not going to come back, but mm-hmm. we put it on the shelf and said it's not time for this right yeah. now. Let's focus on yeah. the things of where we're at and what makes more sense yep. than trying to develop a cook stove. Yeah, it's but, dude, the sausage is making's ugly. It's really it's yeah. and it's really yeah, frustrating. You're throwing in all kinds of fat and <laughs> <laughs> grinding grind, it up. And I get every single company in this building, their product development process, their their process is really ugly. Well, I will say like when Sika came out with like their fanatic whitetail gear and they've come out with the, the you would get your hands. I got my hands on some of the stuff and I'm like this is like nothing else. It's a paradigm shift. This is innovation. This is tailored for you know, and then other people will copy it and kind of yeah, come sure. out with things like it. But that was for me kind of. What'd you a, say? The white tail? Yeah. The white tail fanatic, fanatic gear, you know? Yeah. Like, that's a great example what? of where we're like, Hey guys, let's do this right. Sure. We could, 
we're Sitka. We could probably do what everybody else is doing and be successful. But Which like, is what I kind of expected. Right. Right. And then I'd see, and it was repeated. It wasn't just that line. There was right. a yeah. lot of products with Sitka. Look at the I'm waterfowl like, line. Yeah. Waterfowl is the same way. It's yep. like completely- uh, It's a leapfrog. Yeah. And like, the only whoa. way that happens, by the way, is if you have hardcore users- yes. Right. Yes. Giving you the 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 inf- the- the the information on what what needs to be built the good the bad the ugly and yeah. usually with from within the building which is another thing corporate america doesn't like no a lot. yeah they well, don't you like can that. see companies slip as soon as they're not working with people that actually do the thing right and they're making designs on whiteboards and, or from and like consumer surveys yeah good then luck there's a couple of products that rolled out the last couple of years and i'm not going to name brand names but Oh, products. I will. Let's name brands. <laughs> <laughs> Some products came out and I was like, <laughs> nobody used it. Everybody does like, that. Uh, you legit, uh, I could, uh, if I was in your boardroom, like looking, I could have told you it wouldn't work because I live it, but clearly nobody even put that thing on and used it through the winter before you decided, this is a great idea. Doesn't look sexy. Let's sell it. And you sold it, and it was a disaster. And it's easy to, it's, it, it really, and I've had to learn this lesson myself, it's easy to critique from the outside. The problem is, and it, it happens to every company, you get to this, this spot where you're trying to weigh money-making with your, your, as you grow, you get more and more disconnected from your core consumer. Mm-hmm. Like when That's you, true. when you start, yeah. like what we're here right now, right? We all kind of know exactly in our heads, right? But let's just say our team was a hundred people or 200 people. It's very mm-hmm. difficult to keep that connection. So then you start building products off consumer surveys. You start hiring people out of Harvard and Stanford and, and it's Nike. mostly photographers. And yeah. <laughs> But like that's just what you do because what you what are you trying to do? You're trying to make more money for the board or the stock or whatever. Right. You're not thinking about how to necessarily how to authentically solve problems like you were in the early days. I think it's very difficult to keep that. I I have only seen it happen a couple times. Like you have to have I think personally, you have to have a figurehead, Steve Jobs, Yvonne Chenard mm-hmm. from Patagonia. Elon you have Musk. to have somebody that, that Elon Musk that's like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No language. language. We are not yeah. doing that. No, we're not doing that. I don't care about the board. Sue me. We're yeah. not doing that. Yeah, or we are true. doing that. I don't care about the board. Sue me. Yeah. Like Elon Musk. If you don't, as the founders leave, that connection's gone. Or like the core team leaves. And then it's like they're kind of just running off steam of what happened before and they're just trying to pr- they go into protection mode as opposed to yeah. take risks. You can see it in Hollywood film where it feels like everyone there is disconnected from the rest of America. Yeah. And so the content That's created true. they think in a in a bubble that they're in is really cool but they're just not in touch with with most Americans yeah, and right. the the content doesn't speak to me at all and then yes. the box office it f- shows the yeah. the numbers what can like, we sell in the box office it, you record labels see it, do this all the time you yep. see it with corporations that get so big and yeah. sort of elitist yep um and then they 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 lose touch you see it in some hunting sp- co- brands where they they I kind of think it's just human nature somehow i don't know how to explain it all the way it's like corporatism it just happens it's just a product of it Very you good. can see it yeah i mean one of the Things that um, has been a criticism people talk to me about, they're like, well, we love peaks right now, but what it happens, you know, five years, 10 years, someone comes along and buys it out and it becomes the next, you know, whatever other brand. XYZ brand. And now it becomes something that is, uh, uh, now it might as well be Patagonia. And now they've shoved it in every big box store and they stop selling, they stop like connecting with hunters and pretty soon it's like Yeti was about hunters and now it's kind of the soccer moms. It's Green Day. Green Day was way cooler <laughs> yeah, before right. they got their big record like deal. All of Brinkers are music. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah. I, I, I mean, true. It, I, it just happens. Like the priority goes from being authentic and core and solving yeah. problems to how do we make more money and grow? Hey, if you like our show and you want to support us, Head over to Peaks Equipment and check out what they have. Use the code GRITTY over there and you will save. They've got the trekking poles. They've got their brand new sleeping bag that they just dropped. Peaks has a teepee. They have gaiters. They have a headlamp. All premium products for the outdoorsmen. Head over there. Use the code GRITTY. That's peaksequipment.com. Now let's get back to the show. Part of that comes down to, though, just the human side of things. 
Like, 100%. Yeah, I don't we think it's just... different seasons in life, right? So yeah. the yeah. leadership changes seasons, and yes. you're going to change. You're, you're going to be a different person 10 years from now. You've I'm changed tr- in the last 10 years. I'm trying not to, though. Like, well, I honestly try to remain childish, immature, <laughs> and I, but I, also, I'll agree with that. But also <laughs> a man and in charge. Like, it's a balance. I'm trying to yeah. walk a tightrope here, yeah. but I, I let's, do. Let's ask Gritty Wife about that. <laughs> Here, here's that's the, another podcast. Here's the reality of peaks. Yeah, someday we won't even be involved. It's possible. I don't. I would say it's inevitable. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Like if you look, and I'm, I know it's sad to talk about, right. but like that's just the nature of it. Like unless you well, you don't live forever. Hang well, f- you don't live forever. And brands, like if we're successful, yeah, someday we'll be even like an, it's just the way that it goes we'll we'll sell it or like whatever you have to hire a team that just takes it to the next level and i know who i am mm-hmm. i'm a yeah. 0 to 50 million guy yeah yeah and then i'm out and then you'll write a book about it i know i was at i was at sort of i was at well, you, I'm not, maybe I, a song. I can't i can't be throwing out i'll write a song 0 to 50 <laughs> yeah, you will 0 to 50 <laughs> yeah mark it thank you send Jeff. me the album yes. it's going platinum no you're you're abs- you're absolutely it's it's kind of sad to think right. about but that's I mean, Make sure you get your royalties on that. By yes. Way. And honestly, as, all a, started as a founder, if your goal is to someday move on with your life, as look, a founder, your goal should be, I'm going to sell it or I'm going to kind of step aside. But, but and let David, thing. I can look at people I followed that I was a big fan of. You name the space, you know, sports. It can be a Hollywood. It could be entertainment. It can be in the hunt, hunting space. Okay. And there are individuals who remain down to earth despite their their massive levels of u- ultra levels of of fame like Bryce and feel connected i, I would say donald trump oh, yeah. feels quite the same guy junior you, you nazi as he you. was <laughs> but like You're forever racing. ago just the same dude and not much has changed and no. he, despite like the massive levels of fame he's probably arguably the most famous man in the world i think rogan's done a pretty good job of rogan that. is another one where you're just like he just is in touch with poor people or normal I, people. I'm saying me. Yeah. He hasn't I'm, I'm forgot poor. his roots. He hasn't forgot where he came right. from. Right. And then you see the people who. His Dodge Neon. Exactly. You see the people who got up, you know, ahead and seem to have just completely lost touch with the past and what it was and, and no, more n- normal folks. And I see it at a corporate level too. And so my goal in life is has always been like not to lose touch with down being down to earth and and that like if if I'm going to grow in any capacity in a company as well I want to be the Joe Rogan that's yeah, still yeah. like that's fair. is is down with everybody and doesn't judge people for their class or stature status yeah. and all of that and just enjoys it's a worthy goal yeah, and, well, but I think you have to work at it or you'll lose it. And that's where the brands fail. I see a lot of brands failing is they got there and they're like that, the person who kind of lost touch. Well, and now they're not making products that, that speak to their consumers at all. It's yeah. easy to Like do. Disney films. Look, they can't even make anything. They killed, they, they killed Han they're get, Solo. The they're getting ready to kill Frozen. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm done. I'm just like... I, just, I, I do think, though, that, that smart founders also realize when they can't take the brand that's further. Right. That, and that's what I'm talking about. Right. Like, like yeah, yeah, at some point, I'll get to the point where I'm just like, guys, this is this is beyond me now. Yeah. And he either stays a, 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 you know, this size on the board or something for or, a yeah. long time. 50 million. Yeah. Or it, to 50. Or it grows. He said it. He said it. To <laughs> yeah, set the goal. Million. The dream is big enough. The facts Dude, don't count. That's right. It, but I, but then it's I good think thing we have drink, yeah, bring yeah. to dream. I'm telling you. Know. you. But then Some, I think also you have to look as a as a founder or a partner or whoever. You really have to analyze the why at some point. Oh, 100 percent. Right. Like I'm trying to. We had this conversation the other day. Yesterday, I'm, I'm trying to reevaluate my why. Right. right. Like mm-hmm. prior to last year, or I mean, a few months ago. Yeah. I had one why, and that why was driving me to do what I was doing and to build the business. And now I need to, to find a new why, but, and I think that why is, is going to be being able to help my kids to pursue something that they feel like they can accomplish. Yeah. Right. And, and, and honestly, as fulfilling as peaks is and, 
as far as I can see it going into the future, I also see more importantly, my, my desire and my ability to go out and to help my posterity to achieve something. Legacy. And to build a legacy. Yeah. 100%. Right. And that is the um, fabric of why Peaks is doing well. And it ties back into all three of you guys sitting here. The reason why you want to make films and not do a podcast necessarily is the same fabric that he's talking <laughs> about. Like it speaks to the soul. Yeah. You know, the same thing you keep bringing up um, goes back to Gandhi's know thyself, right? You've, you've been on a journey the last five or six years to know yourself, know the fabric that makes up your heart. And at the end of the day, that's why I want to come to Denver and work. That's why I like peaks is because the guys that are sitting here, the guys that I continue, come in contact with peaks they they are striving for legacy they're striving yeah. to do more for their family and the people around them and their people are their people now yeah. that might not be everybody but their people they yeah. fight for yeah, yeah. It, it comes down i actually just went through a deep dive with one of my mentors about <laughs> how deep about why it was deep okay. it was it was microdosing deep <laughs> I, I will wow. say I will say I will say that I was not microdosing. <laughs> okay, can we talk about there it? There were other tub? people in the room that were microdosing. <laughs> okay, fair he enough. He does live in Oregon. Was it actually in a room though? I mean, <laughs> it was it was in a very sacred spaceship. place. It was a spaceship. Yeah, very safe place. Okay, and what in we, the magic zone. Sweat when lodge. you peel back, when you peel back all the layers of why you want to do ama- uh, extraordinary things in life, like yes. if you have some people don't have the drive to do that. Yeah, some people just have the drive to survive and just stay safe. Hundred percent. Totally fine. But if you're one of those that strives for something more, like extraordinary, like you want your life to mean something. Yes. Really what it comes down to is glory and legacy. Like that's yeah. why yeah. that's that's Nacho Libre. It's not money. You want a taste of the glory. <laughs> it's not money. But you want to lay in your deathbed and be like, dude, I did it. I exactly. like charged through the field. I was brave. Like I I I I showed my people around me and my kids or whatever that that like yeah anything's possible right and th- and that's i don't know that's that's why mo- some movies we love are so inspiring mel gibbs like 300 brave yes. heart and you were deep 100%. diving with somebody we were talking about this with yeah we did a 12 hour deep dive wow uh, See, but I, but the did la- you tape it no <laughs> the last it. the last thing that i would say that i wanted to say is yeah. it used to really piss me off when i had a couple people that i used to work with that would tell me that they would go, you see this team sitting here? None of you guys will be here in 10 years, and I won't be either. And that used to piss me off because I thought, sick, sick you know, yeah, yeah. how dare you, dude? This is like, I bleed, <laughs> or die, I bleed orange. <laughs> but now I look back at those comments and go, no, it's right, dude. There's there's chapters in life. and Exactly. And it, as a founder, I mean, you may, Bryce, you may be here 30 years from now, and that'd be a success. Or you might go, you know, I did it. Yeah. And, and there's someone else that's better at it than me to run this machine. Like, well, Primos did. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, or I, who, I, name the founder. I Sometimes I worry about myself. Me too. Jeff, a yeah. little bit. <laughs> too. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Sometimes I worry about you too. We, we've had some conversations. Yeah. I Because I hear Bryce is over here, and I, and I look at this thing, and, you know, I want to leave a legacy and I hear Brinker over there. I want to make a difference in the world. And and I have those feelings too. I also want to stomp on the throat of some people that have wronged me, but that's glory. Yeah. <laughs> is but that, that, that's that's yeah. glory. Okay. Then it's yeah. fine. Okay. And those feelings are fine. Yeah. It's, 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 not, it's as semi-normal. long as you couple that with <laughs> yeah. the honor. <laughs> yeah. You can't, you can't just take yeah. the glory. No, I, there are, <laughs> there are people in, in throughout your life that are roadblocks or try to try to, uh, th- make light, like, like, s- it's like when I was trying to make the high school basketball team. Yeah, you told me that. And that all these good. guys are like, you can't do it. You suck. You can't do it. And I didn't make it my freshman year. Da, da, da. I just want to prove them all wrong. Yeah. And that that just, you tell me I can't do it. All of a sudden, I find creativity yeah. I didn't have before. And as much as you despise those people for doing those things to you, could you have done what you've done without Without them? the adversity, I would have coasted. It's yeah. almost like I wouldn't have. I know it's so that, cliche that, to say that that's fuel and all that. <laughs> it depends on the person though, right? Because yeah. that's rocket fuel for Brian. Like, yeah, my wife no isn't doubt. built that way. That's at not all. your rocket fuel. I, I, I you're not the same. It's on rocket. That. Fuel. I'm not the same. It's actually so. rocket fuel for me too, and yeah, in, in, a, in a pretty good way. But also, it can be virgin. It can be negative. Yeah. It can be negative. That's you, why I try to like. That's you got to harness it because you'll 
you'll set out trying to do stuff and then you'll get to the end of it and you'll do it and you'll be like, why did I do this? Oh, well, I was just trying to prove that person is, wrong. And when when your motivation <laughs> is only to prove someone wrong, you can kind of lose tr- sight of... Of the, killing the five point and the six point was right <laughs> there. Yeah, you right. lose sight of <laughs> that happens the actual life. overarching... Five points are more... Uh, they are. I like them. More, I'd say, altruistic reason for why you're pursuing something. But that's why you're supposed to surround yourself with iron sharpens iron. That's yeah. why you surround yourself with but, people like but Bryce mentioned, or whatever that... I mentioned this with Michael Jordan, though, too. Like He would find grudges in nursing. Oh, 100%. And they One would of the dr- best at it. drive him... And but, I, I found like I'm, I have that in me, and um, I feel like and I will just, use dude, it for motivation. Brian, yeah. everybody has it. It's the hero's journey. I know, but I'll say it's on journey. different scales. I, I know, I know. Ryan Lampers has it worse than me. It's the hero's journey, dude. There's we a all, man more competitive than me. Is Ryan Lamp? We all need. He won't, we all need. He'll keep a lot, it a secret. Yeah. That's what I was gonna we say, all got to have a villain. Quiet, and we got. We got to have a villain, and we got to have a quest. John Elbridge, We have right? to overcome the thing. It's yeah. just every wild movie. at heart, <laughs> dude. It's every. That's why. That's why we associate with that in in movies and books. Yeah, it's true. because we look at ourselves as the hero of our own story. And and we're not proud of ourselves unless we over, go over the mountain and get the ring and fight the. This is this twelve hour deep dive. I'm you telling did. you, dang, battle to Dude, fight. You guys want Beauty some? Uh, rescue? Come out to Oregon. <laughs> I'm we're coming. Gonna, we're there's some chocolate bars. Don't. <laughs> what kind of chocolate? Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> allegedly, spinal. Allegedly. <laughs> spinal. <laughs> it's spinal. It's spinal. <laughs> Where's Brad? Yeah. It's spinal, it's Brad. Spinal. <laughs> Just for the record, I did not uh, microdose in that okay. Yes, okay? yes. I yes. don't do that. It's cool. I don't, uh, I don't anymore. endorse drugs. Anymore. Well, uh, <laughs> and with that, I think we should wrap up. Uh, folks, if you are People in the are Denver like, area. People are like, what the hell? They were talking about peaks, <laughs> and now they're talking about the hero's journey. We're creative. Yeah. By yeah. Uh, <laughs> come on down to the, uh, the Mile High Hunt and Fish Expo here in Aurora, Colorado. And again, it's, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Come what about your code? Out. You got your code. Oh, $4, four dollars off. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> yes, you get four dollars off yeah. on your admission when you use the code Gritty Twenty Twenty Four. Okay, two zero two four. Gritty two zero two four. You'll get four bucks off if you're bringing your whole family. That could add up. Hey, you hey, know? every little bit counts. Especially if you're Mormon like me, and you had like nine. You told me a this penny morning. Penny saved so. is a penny earned. <laughs> you told me this morning. Four bucks is four bucks. That's right. That's baby. right. Four bucks is four it bucks. is. That's it true. Is. Gritty Twenty Twenty Four. You'll save four bucks. Um, but yeah. Thanks to all you guys that tune in, listen to the show. Really appreciate it. Hope you got something out of this episode. And yeah. uh, like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you Do you think we one. lost more subscribers than we gained in this <laughs> Look, episode? I probably lost. Yeah. Uh, sorry I, about that. I, <laughs> I quit a long time ago yeah. trying to uh, like guess what people want and give it to them. I just decided to just do just talk, you. just you be me. You. And yeah. what, if, whatever happens, happens. Yeah, I think that's a good good you know, rule in life. Agreed. On the podcast, on the New- film, on the film, I have more like, what is it that people feel inspired by, and what, and I try to craft yeah. it. The podcast is just like, let's just sit around a campfire and talk. Hey, different. Love- what, what's the consensus on whether Jeff said anything stupid that we got to edit out prior to launch? Jeff, I have good buddy. I yeah, have, I have, did good. He did great. I thought he, he did, did really good. good too. Brinker, we have to work on. Hey, yeah, I, few, I only cussed well, five dude. times. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely has the f bomb factor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have to tell Brad of what minute mark that was. Yeah, yes. I, I took a little. No, yeah. <laughs> dude, it Brinker's the worst. Yep. That. Yeah. All right, folks. Thanks again. Come, come visit us if you're in town, and uh, stay gritty.